All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our RBT exam practice series where we're going through another set of questions together and breaking them down. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Please like and subscribe. Check out btexamreview.com for all of our study materials, including our combo pack. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's get going. It is Luke's job to verify timesheets each night for his employees. Luke must verify the timesheets for all 10 employees before he can go home for the night. What type of reinforcement schedule is Luke on? All right, so a basic reinforcement schedule question. As always, let's think about what our basic reinforcement schedules are. We have ratio schedules. We have interval schedules. They can be fixed, or they can be variable. Ratio schedules is based on a number of responses, while interval schedules are based on time. So let's look at Luke's schedule here. He has to verify these timesheets. And he has to verify the timesheet for 10 employees before he can go home. Now, is reinforcement of going home based on time or responses? Well, it's based on time. Luke has to do all 10 employees' timesheets before he can leave. Doesn't matter if it takes him five minutes. Doesn't matter if it takes him three hours. He just has to get 10 timesheets or 10 employees done before he can leave. So if it's based on responses, we know it's a ratio schedule. Now, is it fixed or is it variable? Fixed implies it's always going to be the same amount. Variable would be on an average where the amount required could differ. Luke must verify 10 employees every night. That doesn't change. That is his requirement. Therefore, Luke's schedule is fixed. So what type of schedule is Luke on? Well, he's going to be on a fixed ratio schedule. It's not a fixed interval schedule because it's not based on time. It's based on responses. Luke has to engage in a certain amount of responses before he gets reinforced. And then it's not a variable ratio or variable interval because the response required, the amount of responses required aren't changing. They're fixed. So the type of reinforcement schedule that Luke is on is A, a fixed ratio. A skill acquisition plan sets the client's trials to criterion at four in a row. Using the following data where a one equals a correct response, when did the client reach criterion? So we have a measurement slash data analysis question. Fairly straightforward. The hardest part is going to be identifying what a trials to criterion measurement system is looking for. And with trials to criterion, what we're doing is we're setting a goal or a target for the client that they have to hit before we consider it mastered. And so in this case, the trials to criterion is four in a row, meaning the client must get to four in a row, correct in this case, to, to gain mastery, more or less, right? And so in this case, if a one equals a correct response and our trials to criterion are four in a row, when did the client reach criterion? Well, now we have to look at our data. So we have ones and zeros, one equal correct, zero do not. And so if we have four in a row trials to criterion, when did we get there? Well, we can see our first few numbers here. We're not there yet, right? He gets one right, and then he has zeros. Here, he gets three in a row right, but then he has a zero. The criterion is four in a row. So only after he hits four in a row do we say he's reached criterion. So now we have to ask ourselves, how many responses did it take to get there? Well, let's just count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It took the client eleven responses to get the criterion. It isn't one, right? Because he needs four in a row. It isn't six, because if we look at six, he's only gotten three in a row. We throw out the first one because he didn't get them all in a row. And it isn't seven, because again, they've got to be in a row. Alex gets into his car, starts the car, and then hears something fall in his garage. He then gets out of the car, picks up the item, and gets back in the car and drives away. What is the SD for getting out of the car? All right, so we have a behavior question here. And let's first identify in our behavior question the specific behavior we're looking at. We are looking at getting out of the car. Now, we're also looking for the SD related to or relative to getting out of the car. So if we're looking for an SD or a discriminative stimulus, we're looking for an antecedent, we're looking for something that's evoking a behavior, and we're looking for something that's signaling a consequence is available. So let's start by finding getting out of the car in this scenario. 
Alex gets out, gets into his car, starts the car, hears something fall. He then gets out of the car. So here is our behavior of interest. We know we're looking for an antecedent, right? Because we're looking for an SD, which is an antecedent. So we're not worried about the stuff that comes after he gets out of the car because those are all following the behavior. They aren't antecedents. So we have gets into car, starts car, hears something fall. At what point does Alex actually get out of the car? Well, he gets out of the car when he hears something fall. And why does he do that? He could have gotten out of the car at any point. Well, when he heard something fall, that was an SD for a consequence if he got out of the car. Meaning, once he heard something far, fall, he knew he could get out of the car and he could go check and see what fell and pick up that item. So the SD is hearing something fall. So if we look at A, starting the car. Well, starting the car is not what caused him to get out of the car, right? He started the car first, and then he heard something fell. So B is what we're looking for. Alex hears something, heard something fall. He then got out of the car. He then picked up the item. Picking up the item is the consequence. It is not the antecedent. It is not the SD. And driving away comes after getting out of the car, making it not an antecedent. So not too difficult of a question, but what gets people on the behavior questions is not identifying immediately what behavior I'm looking at and what are the antecedents, what are the consequences. If you start there with behavior questions, they become a lot simpler. Always identify first what behavior you're looking at, find it in the scenario, then look for the antecedent, look for the consequence. It is freezing outside, so when Dana walks to get the mail, she runs home as fast as she can to get inside and out of the cold. What is the likely consequence for Dana running as fast as she can? Again, another behavior question. So let's just do what we just talked about, right? What behavior are we looking at? We're looking at Dana running as fast as she can, and this time, we're trying to find the consequence. Last question, we were looking for the antecedent. This time, we're looking for the consequence. Let's find the behavior in the scenario. It's freezing. Dana walks to get the mail. She runs home as fast as she can to get inside, right? So she's running as fast as she can. Well, what's the consequence here? Now, remember, we're looking for the consequence, so it's coming after the behavior. So we're not worried about what happened before. The consequence is Dana gets inside and out of the cold, right? And now, if we look at our answer choices, we don't have that specific option. The question is asking about specifically what type of consequence was getting inside and out of the cold. Well, we have to ask ourselves, avoiding the freezing outside is doing what? Is escaping that freezing cold. And so what consequence is tied to escape? Well, that's going to be negative reinforcement, right? Dana is not positively reinforced for getting inside and escaping the cold. Escape is tied to B, negative reinforcement. And then Dana is likely not going to be punished because when it's freezing outside, freezing, right, is an unconditioned punisher. So we're always trying, nobody wants to be freezing. Okay, so Dana, next time it's cold, she's again going to run as fast as she can to escape the cold. So her behavior is very unlikely to be punished if she gets out of the cold. It's much more likely that Dana running as fast as she can is going to produce negative reinforcement because she escapes the cold. What type of chaining might you describe if someone asked you what type of chaining you would use to teach a behavior in its naturally occurring order? All right, interesting question here. We know it's a chaining question, but it's asked a little differently. We're asking more about the idea behind chaining, some of the fundamentals, some of the concepts. And specifically, what type of chaining would we use to teach a behavior in its naturally occurring order? Well, what do we mean by naturally occurring order? Well, we mean if you break down a, a behavior or a skill into steps, the naturally occurring order is going to be whatever step comes first. So all you have to do is ask yourself, if I'm going to teach natural, in the naturally occurring order, I'm going to teach the first step first. So very obviously, right, that's going to be using forward chaining because backwards chaining does not teach in the naturally occurring order. We're teaching, right? Backwards chaining teaches from the last step, which is not how the behavior naturally occurs. So that only leaves total task chaining. Is total task chaining teaching in naturally occurring order? 
It is. Total task chaining is a variation on forward chaining where we are still teaching from the beginning. We're just teaching the whole chain instead of individual steps. So if someone was to say, if you wanted to teach a behavior in the naturally occurring order, what would you use or how could you describe it? You could either say forward chaining or total task chaining, which is a variation on forward chaining. So our answer here is going to be D, both A and C. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for all of our updates. Check out btexamreview.com for all of our study materials. We also offer BCBA materials, so check those out on our channel. As always, let us know when you pass. Work hard. Study hard. See you soon.